Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome back to our channel. I gotta admit, I totally dread today's project, today's video, and I have in no way excitement, happiness, or enthusiasm to do it. Really? I'm pretty excited about it. Yep. What are we doing today? You tell them. I don't feel like it. We are going to be adding in the bathtub. Hmm. Why is Sam not excited? Because bathtubs get plumbed from under the floor. <laughs> And that is why we did not seal up the belly of the mobile home. Right. The underbelly is still open because that dread has been weighing on my shoulders for months. But no, we are very good. ready to get the belly sewed back up or whatever, taped back up, and the underpinning put back up because we are getting a lot of air up the vents right now. I love how you say we like I'm is equally excited and so happy, but... That's all right. Um, maybe I'll drag you down under the house by your toes. Somebody's got to run the camera. Uh, that's what Elijah likes to do. He sees it as an adventure. Oh, you need to have some adventure. Either way, let's go. We have reached the fabulous first step of installing a tub, and that is to install the drain and the overflow plumbing kit. This is a kit that you can buy in the hardware stores, and they're very universal. What I have done off camera is go ahead and measure and trim to cut both of these pipes so that it fits our tub specifically. Now I'm going to go ahead and do one last dry fit, mark my joints with the pencil so I know to line them up later, and then primer and glue these all together to lock them in. One thing to note with tub kits, my recommendation is to spend a little more money and get the Schedule 40 PVC ones. It's a lot more durable, it's a lot thicker pipe, and it's worth it because you really don't ever want to do this but one time and you never want it to break or leak on you. Our tub drain piping is all glued up ready to go and I want to show you guys a little bit of the next step which is going to be assembling this in the tub. Here we have the actual tub drain unit itself that goes in from the inside. This will thread down here and that's how these two pieces connect. You're going to need a special tool for this. It's called a tub drain wrench that should be available in most all hardware stores. This tub drain wrench you're probably only going to use a handful of times in your life, but you really can't get around using it. It's not very expensive, but it's a tool you got to buy. Its purpose in life is to fit down into the actual tub drain itself and allow you to then thread it in from above and from inside the tub. It's got some fittings here on this end and the other to make it universal and it grips the wrench, the wrench grips the drain that way and allows you to twist it into place. In addition to the tub drain wrench, you're going to need plumber's putty. It's uh, kind of like Play-Doh or clay and this goes on the bottom side of your tub drain and will seal against the tub to help keep water staying where it needs to stay. So I'm going to go ahead and get some plumber's putty, make my snake or rope and wrap it around the bottom side of the drain and go ahead and to start assembling everything here. You know the saying, everything I ever needed to know in life I learned in kindergarten? Play-Doh will help you become a plumber. <laughs> Just make a rope or a snake and then knot talk, and then wrap it around the bottom of the drain. This is one of those areas where you want to use more than you need. You can always trim it and easily pull it off from inside the tub. So don't get cheap. Use a good amount. Because like the tub drain wrench, you're probably only ever going to use this whole little tub once and not put a dent in it. There you go. Our tub drain is puttied up and we can start putting it into place. And this is where you need four hands. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stick this in first because that will kind of hold itself in place. Now I'll put the rubber washer on the floor. And then a second rubber washer. This one is tapered. It is for the drain up top. I just have to remember which way it tapers. All right. Thick side to the top, thin side to the bottom. All 
I always like to install the overflow first so that it's locked down and doesn't move. The overflow is going to have a lot more flexibility than the drain. So with that pinned down, I can finish tightening the rest of the drain. There is the tub drain kit installed. Now we can put the tub down on the floor and mark our location to cut the floor. Yep, that brand new floor we installed, we're gonna cut it. Our hole is cut in the floor. I got the insulation out. As painful as that was to do, since we just did all the work to do all that and close it up, it's required because the tub has to have somewhere for that water to go. Now to the point, I'm gonna go ahead and set the tub down. I'm gonna check level and make sure we don't have to do any kind of shimming to the floor or anything along those lines. If that looks good, I will go ahead and tack it in place with a couple of screws on the studs so it doesn't move around. And then it's time to crawl under the house and plumb everything up with the drain line. Uh, we don't have to shim anything folks. We got lucky on this one Whew. So I'm gonna tack it with a couple of screws around the flange and then we'll crawl under the house Went to the store yesterday, and we actually picked up our tub faucets and all that stuff So I had the thought while I was just finishing putting the tub in to think hmm Let's get that faucet out. Let's double check it and make sure you don't have to move anything around so I got the actual control piece out because this is what's the most picky as far as mounting depths and clearances left to right and I'm glad I did I guess I found out now that I need to move that wall stud over there's not enough clearance left to right for this to fit plus the vent pipe plus still be centered with the tub so I need to cut and move the stud the tricky part is the wire is already run through the wall stud and unless I want to undo all my staples and pull the wiring out from this whole wall section, I'm going to have to get creative. I consider myself a pretty creative guy, so I'm going to opt to cut the bottom of the stud probably about a half inch off, make it shorter because I need to move it this way where the ceiling is shorter and that should give me enough room to move it out of the way, not have to pull the wiring out of the wall and overall probably be a pretty cool little life hack i guess well that was slightly annoying but it's just one of those things you have to do and one of the things that normally is not ever talked about in videos people might just glaze over that whole headache process but that's not how we roll if we're suffering we're bringing you guys along too <laughs> In all reality, we want to make sure we do show you guys a lot of the things that goes into these projects so that if you decide to do it yourself, you're better prepared. We would be doing no one a service of glazing over or making something seem easier than it really is because you would then walk in blindly or not as prepared and then you would hate us or we would just otherwise be not very truthful about what we show. So that is why we do what we do. I have debated whether or not to bring the camera down underneath the house, but I really think it's just going to be too much to juggle all at once for what is effectively a couple of PVC pipes that I'll be gluing together that I think I can just show you guys up here. So, that being said, 
here is what I'm going to be doing. We're going to take the bottom of the tub drain and I'm going to glue on this P-trap. This is a Schedule 40 trap, just like that whole tub kit where I said get the more expensive stuff, it's a lot thicker. Same thing applies for your P-trap. It is going to attach to the tub drain here and then do its little thing as P-traps do to create a water lock so vapors don't come back up. The cool thing about these is they are very positionable so you can kind of wiggle squiggle everything in where it needs to go to fit within the joist. Whenever I get that figured out, I'm also going to be using this. It is a sanitary tee that is a reducer from a two inch to an inch and a half. My tub drain is an inch and a half. They will connect this way. The important thing with sanitary tees is to make sure the curve follows gravity. So you want it mounted that way. Definitely not this way. And then once that's in place, this is what's going to go on down to connect with the plumbing drain that we did earlier when we redid the toilet and the sink and everything. That will connect in here. And then this is what will come up through the floor and going up through the roof for our vent. It's not going to be exactly this way. I may have a couple of spacers to do it this way or that way or whatever. But this is the overall goal is to connect the tub with the P-trap and then tie it in with a sanitary tee to then drain on out and then vent at the same time. So that's what I'm going to do to the house, but you guys hang out here and I'll see you whenever I get the job done. I'm down here hanging out underneath the house. I have the floor right above my head and I uh, just finished the plumbing of the tub and Angel's going to pour some water down the tub drain. Um, okay, well, I didn't just finish it. I've let the glue dry for about probably five minutes. We're going to go ahead and pour water down the tub and check for leaks. Oh, boy. Okay. Let her rip, tater chip. What? Go. Pour it like you mean it. You done? Yep. Yay, no leaks. Yay. <laughs> now I can uh, seal up this underbelly best I can, given we still have to do it otherwise where the bathroom main opening was. But uh, we'll call that success and we'll get out of this thing after cleaning up all my tools. Well, that was entirely not fun, but it is done. It does not leak and was more complicated than I illustrated before I went trotting down there. And, <laughs> well, that's just the way it goes. Um, Angela had to go to the hardware store for me. She volunteered. I watched the kids while she ran to our local mom and pop's place. She had like a list of like 45s and elbows and this size, that size and reducers. Because at that point I'd already been under there to realize what I had was not going to work. So it was like, clear the shelves. Get a little bit of everything. <laughs> But it is all done as far as the tub drain hookup. The next thing I need to do is fix the vent pipe and also add in some blocking for us to mount our shower faucet and our shower head and probably also the tub spigot. We're trying to get everything in this wall done so that we can then begin the next step, which will be hanging drywall. We have been discussing pipes and vent Ologies. So I'm going to let the resident ventitrationistic uh, explain it to you guys what we have discovered or come up with and the solution we have. As well as talk about the problems we're facing. So as of right now, this is where the vent pipe comes up. But our faucet that is going to be about right here, it's in the way. And you can't hook up all the water lines. So what we're talking about is moving it over to this joist in order to connect it back at this size up at the top. So we've been trying to figure out how to get it over here with the little pieces that we have. And so we have two 45s and I have one down at the vent pipe coming this way. And then we're gonna connect it like so. And then we have a couple of 90 degrees that we can connect it back to the black vent pipe at the top.
I know it's not the one, but we'll see if we're on target. And it fits. We want to make sure this pipe is not in our way for the shower head. So we held up our tub surround and have the height of it. So I'm going to cut this black pipe up quite a bit further. Not too crazy, but out of there. So we have enough room to have this whole area clear for our faucet, shower head, plumbing, and everything. And this will be the last time hopefully we touch this stuff. There's all the pieces cut and that is just dry fit in a place. So now we'll take them all apart after we mark our joints with pencils. Not that we have anything that complicated, but it's always good to mark the joints. Now we'll take it apart and glue it all together to make it official. Well, we feel accomplished, although visually not a lot was accomplished. But we feel accomplished. <laughs> Behind the scenes work. Yes, the things that make things go. <laughs> and take things that go away. The end. <laughs> So we have finished all of our rough plumbing work. The drain pipes are all connected from septic tank to rooftop again. We are now good to go with the shower at least. Mm -hmm. And we have our blocking in place for all of our shower controls and tub spout and shower head. Mm -hmm. And we drilled holes through the floor and put our bathroom sink supply lines back into the house. So you're done under the house. I am, with the exception of closing up the underbelly. Right. I want to wait until everything is done and hooked up. We'll do a bunch of fluid tests. Well, I guess water tests. <laughs> fluid. I want to make sure there are no leaks. And as long as we're good when everything's hooked up and being used for a little bit, then yes, I'll seal the underbelly. The last thing I want to do is go through the work and then find out there's problems or assume that we're all good when we're not. Right. It's Lego time in the living room, so creativity and fun noises abound just on the other side of that doorway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, give them a little preview. What do we think may be next? I'm breaking my own cardinal rule of not saying on camera what we're doing next, but what do you think is the next thing we'll probably get to do? What have you been waiting for forever? Drywall. Drywall. We will. Our next video or our next project we will go ahead and start hanging drywall here in the bedroom and in the bathroom as well. Mm -hmm. um, that will have us cutting the power a little bit and, you know, using our blind mark tool that we used yes. for the soap shed. And we will cut our boxes and have all sorts of fun. So, if you're not a subscriber, stick around and subscribe and stick around. Um, if you are a subscriber, then you know it'll just be a couple more days and you'll get to see that fun stuff happening. Leave a comment below. We love to read them. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next time in the construction zone. <laughs> A.K.A. home. Bye. See ya. Hi. <laughs> now I'm in focus. Let's go for a little bit. Are you moving? There we go. You're moving me. I will move you. Still takes the focus away. Wrap it around the tub drain, and I'll drop everything. Hey, it's on me. I wonder if it's partial to this side of the screen or... It doesn't work. <laughs> oh, there it does. 20,000 hours over our lifetime. Did it go to you? Oh, no, it did. Okay. It was on your ear for a while. It's one of those things that you're going to buy once and probably only ever use once. Unless you do a lot of tubs. Figures. I love how I'm you say cooling. we. We are very ready. I'm I'm cool. I'm fine with it. Really? Aw. Oh, don't get it, get it. She's got something attached to her and she's like... <laughs>